And welcome back to You Read John in 120. I am Jeff Cliff. This is 120 videos of things that I learned as a student of computer science at the University of Regina. Today we're going to be talking about curiosity. Uh, so curiosity is a prerequisite to a serious advance in science and reasoning in general. Apathy and fear, or apathy and fear of error, are mind killers. Same goes with the fear of litigation, power, and proprietary software and or software patents. The part of our brain that does memory responds to fear the best, but in the long run may require curiosity to be willing to learn anything more general purpose. Cortisol is worth looking into how it works long-term effects for this reason. Curiosity and interest are preconditions for not not studying. The more you know, the more things you can know. Every class that I took, I think I I measured it out to about 300 questions that were unanswered on average. I think it was between 1 and 300. Uh, but for sure, uh, with an, a curious mind, everything that you learn can be a gateway into more things that you can be curious about. Everything that you can understand can lead you to be curious and be willing to understand more things. This is related to practically all the videos we've taken so far, uh, including the different approaches in the 1, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 video because every pattern that you can see and every approach that you take is another way of looking at the things that you already know about and the things that you could know about. And the more ways of looking at things, the more ways you can see things. Look for the best way to do things and then look for an even better way once you've found that. Uh, there's a story from uh, Woz, the, you know, one of the two guys who founded Apple Computer, uh, it, about how he used to kind of put boards together to do basic kind of electronic stuff. And then a game that he would play would be to try to use as few chips, as few computer chips as possible to make the same board work. And usually he would be able to cut like a chip or two off of any design that he would start with just because he was so used to playing this game with himself. He was so used to being curious about whether or not he could do better uh, that he was kind of by default looking for ways to, to kind of improve his design and to use fewer chips uh, and was way ahead of the competition because he was able and willing to do that. And besides, different approaches are fun. Look for them. You know, you, you can find, you, you don't have to do it the same, you know, you don't have to solve the same problem the same way every time. You can look at it from different perspectives. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But it kind of freshens things up. Uh, and if you're constantly kind of presented with new material to learn, uh, it's a lot more interesting of a life. Uh, I've talk to people who uh, have done the same job for you know quite a few years and other people who have changed their job you know even at the same company just so that you're you're always kind of learning new things you're curious about uh, different aspects of the business and different things that the business does you're, you're getting a bigger and bigger picture the more you kind of approach things you know you, you, you can get a, a, a much broader view and a much deeper understanding if you're willing to learn if you're curious about the things that matter and are willing to expand your, your collection of things that matter to encompass things that you may not be interested in now. It's worth you know going to the, the Great White Combine video and to help people who are not currently curious see why they should be curious. And if they can't be curious because there's problems with their diet uh, or their stress level, to help them with their diet and stress level uh, so that they get enough food in their, you know, get enough caloric balance so they can be curious and that they're, you know, not necessarily stressed out to all hell uh, on just the day-to-day -day stuff so that they can focus a little bit on improving their, their life and their day-to-day -day stuff. It's related to the All the Data video and the Venn Diagrams video because you can exhaustively look through all the possibilities. You can draw out the Venn Diagram of, of some phenomenon or something in your life uh, of all the possibilities and then you can kind of check each of them off and be curious about each possible outcome and you know what it's like, what it what it can be, what it can mean to you. It's related to the circular reasoning video because you can express some things with circular reasoning and with recursive uh, functions, uh, but sometimes you can also express them in other ways, in non-recursive ways. And it's worth trying to express things that are recursive in a non-recursive way and things that aren't recursive in a recursive way, just to get into the habit of thinking in both ways. 
it's related to the analogy video, because if you can make better analogies, or even worse analogies, sometimes it's worth trying to do so, just to kind of keep your concept fresh, to keep it so that you're not overusing the same concepts, you're not kind of burning out the same thing in your memory, uh, and then just kind of forgetting the reason why you decided to make the analogy in the first place. Uh, if you continually <coughs> are playing around with your kind of view of some topic, uh, you can you know, always be getting narrower and narrower to a view of it that works in a broader scope. It's related to the read the question video, because if you're curious about the question uh, on an exam or a midterm, say, you'll probably read it right in the first place. Whereas if you're not really curious about it, you'll just kind of skim over it and, you know, you won't necessarily pay enough attention to catch the details that may be the clue to getting the question right. So be curious about what is the caused and what is the causing uh, part of a situation. So go to the post hoc video for kind of details about situations where that can arise. Uh, be curious about what other people think. Be curious about the boundaries of sciences in the alchemy video uh, and where the science is not quite yet defined what is uh, known to be true in the context of science. There's plenty of areas that are just not quite at the point where they can describe things in a scientifically robust way yet, uh, but where experiment can still be done. And those areas of science, those boundaries, those frontiers, all sorts of exciting things are happening. And you can easily get interested in for example, what's going on in the, the, gal the crowdsourced galaxy finding or crowdsourced uh, protein folding. You know, even just like little aspects of those two problems are could take up all sorts of mental energy if you have it to the kind of give to them. And it could be fruitful to know what the kind of problems that the people in those areas face. And so it's easy to get into, it's easy to get kind of results right away, and you know, it's free, free go. As long as you have an internet connection, you can take part in both of those problems right now, right as soon as you watch the end of this video. Uh, it's available to you. You can enjoy it. You can you can engage with it as a game, as something that you could you know spend time with as a relaxed, you know, as your 10% time from other activity. Um, you can absolutely do it. Uh, and be curious, because if you don't be curious, uh, it's entirely possible that in our lifetime, artificial intelligence might advance to the point where the things that we currently gain the kind of endorphin boost from solving, the, the reward for our curiosity, may be taken away from us. So if we don't do it now, we may not get a chance. So be curious about things and learn things in the natural way now because you want to do it now before it's too late. Uh, it's also worth pointing out that the curiosity of the internet is an aggregate sum of the curiosity of its members. Uh, it does seem to scale in, in kind of a, a fairly linear fashion. So if you, you know, if anyone on the internet adds curiosity to the whole, we increase the curiosity of the whole network. And so we, we've got this huge Katamari Davisi ball of curiosity rolling around in the universe right now, and it's picking up all sorts of fun stuff. So, you know, take part in that. It's, it can be uh, very rewarding to be part of this large ball of, you know, spinning curiosity flying around the world in the internet. Um, it's, you know, go back to the Polya video. Polya encourage, encourage curiosity as a general rule so that you wouldn't be, you know, just another absent-minded professor type who, you know, goes about his business and is kind of lost in his own little world. Uh, yes, you can get lost in your own little world and that's okay, but uh, there's a whole universe waiting for you to kind of experience it. Go, go read this, you know, if, you, if you're really interested in how big of a scope things are, uh, the, the Star Makers, I think it's by Olaf Eric or Stevenson or Olaf something or other, uh, but he like describes a scope of the universe and how your curiosity could engage the whole thing. It, it, it's way bigger than, you know, anything I'm capable of, but, you know, just to give an idea of how, how much you could apply what you want to know to the outside of the, your own head, the outside of your own field, etc. And of course, the lady uh, Ada Lovelace uh, and her poetic science. You know, she would have been, you know, willing to 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 encourage the the development of machines that help us become more curious. So, you know, making computer programs that help us become more curious is an open problem. It's something that you can do. If there, it's a, a something to be curious about. Right there is. How do we become more curious? How do we encourage ourselves to become more curious? These are open problems. They're, they're interesting problems. They're fun to, to grasp with, to talk about, to engage with. 
uh, go for it. Um, Socrates, Socrates, in a, is in a, you know, he taught the Socratic method is, is one founded on curiosity and encouraging the, the student to be curious and to ask questions and to give answers in a way that leads open the possibility of other answers. Socrates and Diogenes were both willing to be curious as part of their character and would have valued someone who is interested in learning as, as you know something valuable, as something that makes them uh, worth, that, that's part of a life worth living in, in their kind of context. It, it's, it's valuable to have the beginner's mind to be willing to learn as much as possible and in fact this helps with teaching and of course teaching helps with learning so it's kind of like a vicious or a virtuous cycle of uh, learning and curious uh, behavior both feeding each other. Uh, relating to the Proverbs video, there are tons of quotes uh, on curiosity of various ages and uh, uh, lengths. Uh, from, you know, some selections are, quote, curiosity killed the cat, unquote. Well, yes, uh, absolutely, <laughs> but cats have nine lives, so it's all good. Y you can experiment. Get, you know, get a couple of cats down. It's, it's all good. Um, the quote, the most important thing is not to stop questioning. Curiosity has its own reason for existence. One cannot help but be in awe when he contemplates the mysteries of eternity, of life, of the marvelous structure of reality. It is enough if one tries merely to comprehend a little of this mystery each day." Unquote. Albert Einstein, at least according to the internet, you can double check that. But either way, like it's, you know, look at the, the, you know, the, the Neil deGrasse Tyson uh, Cosmos episode with the, you know, zooming into the dewdrop. I think it's deeper and deeper. E either way, like you, you know, everything that you can zoom in on, there's something interesting happening on that scale. It's it's amazing how, you know, both the, the size and scope of the universe, but also that on every level, there, there's something going on on that level that would be interesting to teach, that would be interesting to point out. You just have to see it. I had an idea for a subreddit, for a website or something in the past where you could, like, have some kind of an augmented reality thing where you point at something and say, say, tell me something interesting about this. And then you'd be connected with some kind of a crowdfunded you know, system that would you know, connect you with an expert on something on that context. So that if you're in a museum, for example, you look at an old shoe, they could present you with information about you know, the, the kind of manufacturing that enabled that shoe to be made, the political uh, situation in the area that that shoe was made at the time, and so on and so forth. You know, with, there's a never-ending uh, fractal nesting of drama in just the political level, in just the, the drama of between political interests and um, between internal and external conflict within groups, and that's just that the people, that's ignoring the science and the how the, phys the laws of the universe actually govern the situation itself. All of these dimensions of, uh, of that you can approach these situations, and all these dimensions you can approach each of these, these topics and these contexts, they're, they're, you can go into them, you can learn about them, and it's enjoyable to learn about them. And it's not just enjoyable, but it's practical. There's pragmatic reasons why you would be curious, and why you would be interested in learning about a situation, and interested in knowing about a situation, or any particular part of that situation. There may be some exceptions, though. Uh, there is the argument from emotion, so if you try to argument, or if you make an argument uh, that depends on establishing a curious a person that may or may not always be a good thing. Uh, and of course, there may be an existential risk in that uh, curiosity doesn't seem to have an end point, and that we can continue to get more and more interested in the universe and exhaust all our resources uh, <laughs> by uh, you know, becoming inc exponentially more uh, curious. Uh, I don't think that this is going to be a problem in our lifetime, but it may be worth pointing out that on some level, somebody may end up having to deal with that problem, but I certainly don't ever intend on reaching it. So, uh, at least in my existence, uh, the value, the terminal value of curiosity is an important thing to pick up, and I would encourage you to pick it up as well, to include it as part of your very being, uh, as something that guides you and makes you kind of interested in the things around you and the people around you, etc. If you have any questions about pretty much any topic, and you'd like to be curious about that topic, uh, you know, give it a shot. Throw it a, 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 out on the internet. We'll, we'll, we'll see what you, we can do about your uh, particular uh, obscure uh, occult uh, type thing uh, that you are interested in becoming interested in. Uh, it's usual if you have some Bitcoin and you'd like to throw it our way so we can continue making these videos and doing cool things and becoming in exponentially more interested in the world around us, 
uh, feel free to send a little our way, and we will see you next video.